Hi, Signature Associates and friends. Welcome to the Signature Edge Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you design an uncommon and impactful career in the business of healthcare. Together, we are making a difference for our clients by lowering the rising costs and administrative burdens associated with great care. Engage with us as we spotlight big ideas to discover an uncommon you through leadership, teamwork, and focus on the healthcare industry. Think deeply, commit fully, and take yourself to the next level of performance. Well, hello, everybody in the Signature Edge podcast world. We're so excited you guys are here with us today to learn more about how we will make those around us better. I am excited and honored to be joined here with Claire Cleveland. She is our organizational experience strategist and just an amazing person. Claire, how are you doing today? Well, thanks for the introduction, Chris. I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. So we're going to dive into this topic a little bit. And before we do that, though, I'd love for you to clarify what this role is as an organizational experience strategist. What does that entail? What does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, so this is an actually unique and uh, very new role that I had the opportunity to step into. Um, so my role as the organizational experience strategist is to ignite engagement and foster growth through connection, education and development, and uncommon leadership. And so there's quite a few ways that I do that. Um, so you might be familiar with me from an onboarding and orientation perspective. So if you're super new to signature performance, um, I'm already in your inbox um, in, in your voicemails before day one even. And then overseeing your experience as you transition and acclimate to your team. Um, so I do that by checking in with you every 30, 60, 90 days, and then six months and one year as you join signature performance and get a good understanding of what your experience has been like to make sure that we're meeting expectations. And if not, um, of course, finding a way to always make that experience better and constantly improve. Um, another way that I plug in with associates is through our associate resource groups, working to get people um, connected not only to one another, but into the community and many other ways that I'll check in with people from a professional growth and career development standpoint. Um, whether it be through Signature U, meeting with me for stay interviews and talking about career goals and things within that nature. That's awesome. What, a, what an exciting and cool role to be in. Uh, I got the pleasure of experiencing this when you connected me with one of our interns that's working here with, I think, our innovation team. And he and I had a great conversation, got to talk about technology and how he's using some AI things and we're putting some of that into place. Uh, it's just really fascinating, you know, so that connection piece is really, really awesome. So you're part of the experience team. In, in your opinion, what do you see as one of the primary purposes of the experience team and, and how does that relate to making those around us better? Yeah, absolutely. Great question, Chris. And there's probably a lot of ways that I could tackle this, but I think what it stems down to is that we are in the people business, so to speak. We could not do what we're doing without the people that we do it with. And so when I think about our experience, Experience team, there's a lot that goes into an individual's experience within an organization, and the approach that Signature Performance takes is a holistic one. Um, so making sure that not only are things great from a day-to-day -day standpoint in your position, but also making sure that we are taking care of your overall health and well-being and meeting those expectations as well from an experience point of view. So that could be finding fun events for you to tune into and having a great and open and free space to connect with others. Um, it could be very specific specific to your career and your, you know, career paths and development here at Signature Performance. Um, it could be even something as small as, you know, when you look around, you know, seeing all the cheery smiles of other associates or our signs, um, our, our personal brand here at Signature Performance and those kinds of items. So really our team is an entire department dedicated to ensure that you are having all your expectations met and hopefully, at least it has definitely been in my case, exceeding them. Uh, you know, and we're here to talk a little bit about how we make those around us better. And I just want to go through the definition for everyone who, who hasn't gone through the signature way in the past. 
And it is, I am honored to be working alongside creative, innovative, innovative and forward-thinking individuals. I will share skills, useful information, and feedback to make everyone at Signature Performance better. I will model high performance to everyone I encounter. When you read that definition, when you hear that definition, what sticks out to you? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot to me sticks out about this particular uh, guidance, so to speak. Um, It's actually my favorite of the signature way. And I think what really hits, I guess, the deepest chord is building high trust. So when I think of this, I think about being the person for others that you've needed in your life. So whether that be, you know, maybe you accomplished something great and it didn't get recognized. Well, you know how that feels. So going forward, you can ensure that you are lifting others up and giving them the recognition that they deserve. Uh, Maybe that means being Uh, patient or or graceful with somebody who might just not be having their best day. Um, Or maybe it's just simply being that resource, a trusted person that they know that they can go to. And if you don't have the answer, you'll find it. But regardless, if they come to you, they know that you're going to make their day, their lives, um, their career better. I I love how that dovetails with your strengths of empathy and positivity and being a developer. (laughs) That's that's pretty fantastic. Oh, you caught on to that, huh? I did, just, just, a, just a little bit. One of the things that I really like about this one is talking about sharing skills, useful information, and feedback. And skills pretty makes sense, right? You know, we, we do our best. We take what we have and we use it to, to uh, enhance our role, enhance those around us. Useful information, sharing information. I think Signature is a really unique place in that people aren't holding things back to protect their role. They're really open about, you know, this is what we know. This is how we make things better. And I think that creates that trust. It helps to enhance that trust you're talking about. And giving feedback, sharing feedback, that can be a tricky one, can't it? I mean, sharing positive feedback, that's easy, right? Giving people recognition. I think that's, that's a great thing that we do, but sometimes it's difficult to give constructive criticism? You know, how do we give feedback that's, hey, maybe this is a growth area for you? What are some approaches that you've used in the past to to do that part of your developer skill piece? Yeah, absolutely. And so when I think about this, I really tap into my strength of empathy. And I think if I were the person on the receiving end of this, what would I want to hear? And what I can tell you is that if I'm not doing something the best way, or there's a way to do it better, I absolutely want to know about it. However, I know that as a human being, um, someone who takes a lot of pride in the work that I do and wanting to do a good job, I also don't want it to be communicated to me in a way um, that could come off as condescending, or, you know, it could come off as super harsh or negative. And so my My best recommendation for providing feedback in a sense that might not always be the most positive is to always make it seem like an opportunity to improve. So it's not necessarily, hey, you're doing this wrong, so I'm going to take it over from here. But instead, hey, I identified this. You did this part really great. Keep doing that. And with this particular area, let's work together to figure out how we can make it better going forward. So it's not a, hey, you have a problem, fix it type of thing. It's a, hey, I noticed this, but I see a lot of great things about the way that you're currently doing it. How about you and I take this on together as a team? Because we are a very team versus I oriented organization. And so we always want to stride together forward when we're thinking about making others better. Yeah, the culture here is really unique in that it's all about developing each other. And I think that's a great way to approach it. You know, here's an area for growth. And all of us have those. Like nobody has arrived. We're all able to improve and grow and and become better. One of the questions in the leadership playbook is, how do you grade yourself? Well, on, I assume positive intent in all interactions. You know, that can be difficult to do. How do you go about doing that? Absolutely. And yes, it can, it can be difficult to do, especially, you know, everyone's mood changes on a day-to-day basis. And so in assuming positive intent is really taking the time to reflect on yourself. So if you are feeling any feelings of, you know, stress or negative feelings, um, a lot of times it has more to do with ourselves than it does the other person. And so whenever I'm having a, a conversation with somebody or I'm in an, an interaction and something maybe didn't come off to me the correct way, I kind of check myself first because sometimes it could deal with things that happened in the day that has nothing to do with that person. Also remembering and really going back to our mission, vision, and values here at Signet. We are all here because we want to make something better. We want to move forward in the healthcare industry and we want to better ourselves as people and as team members. And so if something occurs that to me seems out of place with those items, then it's kind of like, okay, maybe they just were in a 
rush. They didn't have the time to word things the way that they wanted to. Maybe external factors went into this. Maybe it was myself. But just assuming that since we are all here for a common purpose, that there is never ill will or an intent um, to communicate things in a way where it maybe hurt your feelings or didn't come off the best. Um, so really just having empathy, but also when those type of conversations or you know items take place, really remembering to be open and honest and speak on those feelings. So instead of allowing yourself to build things up in your head and you know maybe stew on them and assume that someone was annoyed with you or frustrated with you or those kinds of things, instead taking the time to call that person and just say, hey, I received this communication or this came across to me in this way. I just wanted to make sure that if there was any negativity or hostility between us that we worked it out. And, you know, if I have this all in my head, just let me know. And typically when you interrupt a thought like that and you take the time to pick up the phone and have a phone call or a face-to-face -face conversation with that person, it's cleared up within a minute versus you, you know, letting it ruin your day or stewing on it for a full eight hours. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. It's, it's amazing how often we in our own heads perceive something that isn't there. And as a result, we ruin our own day. And the person has no idea that they meant nothing by it. They had, they had positive intent and just a communication issue. So that, that is great feedback. Great, great information. Claire, I really appreciate you spending time with me today. Thank you so much. I know you're busy and you've got a lot going on. So thanks for joining us here on the Signature Edge. Absolutely. Thank you for your time again. It was a pleasure. And I hope everyone has an awesome rest of the day. Yep. You as well. All right, everyone, welcome back to The Edge. Uh, this is an exciting day. And Chris, I have to tell you, thank you so much for that great interview with Claire Cleveland. That was exceptional. Oh, thank you. Uh, Claire is so much fun to talk to and work with. She really knows her stuff and was a, an honor to have some time with her. Well, when we talk about I will make those around us better, this is a big subject. Amy, what were your key takeaways from uh, Chris's conversation with Claire just to get us kicked off here? Yeah, I took a couple of notes. I wrote down, give feedback how you'd like to hear it. I thought that was a really great little nugget. But what I really liked at the very end is when she tied it all that to remind ourselves that we, we all look back to our mission, vision, and values. And so that's everybody's North Star. And so if we assume that that's everybody's North Star, we'll have an easier time assuming positive intent when we are um, working with people or even maybe even disagreeing with people. So I think that was um, really, really insightful. Well, a lot of times I find that we spend an enormous amount of time talking about vision, mission, and values. And oftentimes some of the first impressions of partners and uh, the community members that come into our, um, our company, the first thing they notice is that, wow, you really mean these things. I mean, you have words on the wall, but it's like everybody knows courage, passion, integrity, respect, and the essence of what we're trying to get there. And we make critical decisions based on those. What is it about Signature that has been able to shape us so that we actually live our vision, mission, and values? What's, where does that come from? I think a big piece of it comes from the investment that leadership makes in its people, right? It's, you know, it's one thing to put words on a wall, but it's another thing to enable people to really pursue them and to help them develop in a way that they can do it better. Um, and here at Signature, I know there's a significant investment made into the betterment of everyone here and, and training opportunities and strengths and experience team and everything. I think it's pretty phenomenal how, how it's uh, leadership putting their money where their mouth is and wanting everyone to truly be the best that they can be. That's, that's a great point. And when I think of the signature way, and I think of Alan Fredrickson, our founder, and chief executive officer, when, when he put this together, from day one, he had a vision. And his vision always included living values. His vision always included living mission. And so, you know, when you think about some of the work Claire mentioned just in her job responsibilities and titles that touch on the experience of the associate, I think that is a unique part of our focus is helping to make sure that that those come alive and that we understand what those values are and why they're important because when we're in alignment, and that's what we're talking about here, and have a little bit of trust with each other, then all of a sudden we're able to accomplish anything we want to accomplish as an organization, and it shows in our results. And to bring that to life, it takes a village, as Karen 
would often say it takes a village to bring this to life. And so I think it really does take each of us. Claire mentioned a couple of things that really stood out to me as well. And, and one of those elements or tenets was assume positive intent. I would love for you to respond. How do you go about your day? First of all, what does that mean to you? And how do you go about your day assuming positive intent? A very interesting concept. And uh, one's very near and dear to my heart because my wife and I, uh, early on in our marriage, we were getting used to living in the same house together. And, you know, when you go from being single and independent to married and no longer independent, uh, it, it brings with it some consternation, right? And, you know, I think we can all admit when we're in relationships, there's fighting, there's disagreement. And um, it, it was, uh, we got together with some people who we, we really uh, valued and, and talked through this with them. And they're like, you know, you need to t- think about the other person with positive intent. Does my wife love me or does she hate me? Is she out to get me? Or, you know, do we, do we love each other and we want the best for each other and we're just having some kind of miscommunication here? And when we started having our disagreements, I'll use the word fighting with air quotes here, right? It's what it truly is. But we have that with positive intent in the mindset of this person actually loves me and wants the best for me. It changes the whole nature of that disagreement. And so I think you can take that and you can apply that to the professional arena and realize that the people here at Signature are our top shelf and we really do care about each other. And they're not out to get me. You know, they're here to share with me some information that can potentially help me improve, help me grow, do my job better, be a better person. And uh, it really, if you, if you have that mindset, it changes the way you think about your interactions with ind- individuals. For me, I would count on the advice I got from um, another co-host on this, Mark Mathia. Uh, Mark Mathia, anytime he has any sort of, I don't know, distress with how something was replied to, or he feels funny about how someone's reacting, he picks up the phone and calls them. That makes a huge difference in business when you quit relying on written communication and pick up the phone and call them because then you all of a sudden remind each other you're human and all of a sudden you can hear the voice and hear the tone and hear that it's not at all probably what you thought it was when um, when it was coming at you. So that's what I um, I always lean into is Mark's advice. Well, and as you recall, when we started to move to a hybrid workforce, that became even more important, that we had the ability to remember that we're human because on Zoom all day looks like a big video game. And so to live the values, the vision, mission values out during this post-pandemic era or during the pandemic especially was really challenging to how do we keep that alive and how do we continue to be the best version of ourselves as we're leading people remotely and in office and trying to tie everyone together and help them have an experience, a career experience worth really noting. Okay, let's play a little game. I'm going to go through and read each of the tenets of I will make those around us better. And I want you to give me the first word or two that comes to mind after each one of these. Okay, number one, I am good at building high trust and high performing partnerships. Investment. That's, that's my word. Lead. Investment. Lead. Very good. Number two, my team tends to attract and retain the industry's best talent. Environment. Mm. I was going to say space. So you have space to allow great talent to do great work. Mm. And and that's a really, really important one because we know that a manager controls 70% of how the associate feels about their work. Excellent. All right. Mark, it's now your turn. I'm going to do number three. It's your turn, Mark. It's your turn. Ready? What word comes to mind when you hear, I love to discover people doing the right thing and acknowledging them? Strengths. There is no greater form of leadership than recognizing people, not just blowing air around the room, but noticing exactly what they're doing right and calling it out and bringing it to life because that helps the individual to develop and grow. Chris? Oh, I didn't know you were coming back to me. Uh, I love to <laughs> uh, encouragement is probably, it's probably the word that I would think of, you know? Good uh, word. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, we all have ups and downs, right? And a little bit of encouragement can go a long way and it really can carry someone all the way through their day. You know, a little pat on the back, a uh, kind word. Uh, it lifts everyone up. I like in there the word discover. 
I think that's a really strategic word because that means you're looking for it when you're trying, when you discover stuff, you're in it and you know what's going on. So you typically yeah. don't discover things on the surface level. You discover it when you dig a little deeper. It takes a lot of intentionality. And we've talked about that a lot through this series. You have to be really intentional about seeing that stuff that's right coming out of your coworkers. I will say that Signature is pretty special in this, right? In that more than any other organization I've been a part of, they they are very active. We are very active at looking for those who are performing well, who are doing great things, who are, you know, going above and beyond. And just it, the opportunity for growth within the company is so phenomenal for, you know, from people coming in and frontline, working their way all the way up to the executive role. It's it's pretty impressive to see how those opportunities present themselves here. Couldn't agree more. All right. I assume positive 10 in all interactions. What's the word? Mindset for me. That's a good one. I would throw out, um, it's two words. If I can uh, uh, ruin this, uh, psychological safety. Yeah, that's a good word. That's a really good one. Mark, how would you, how do you build psychological safety on a team? What, What would you say? Where would you start? Or how do you know if as a leader, if you have it? Yeah, well, you know, as a leader, if you have it, if people are willing to be uh, transparent and open. And the more you ask hard questions, if you're getting canned responses and kind of responses that are surface level, you know that you probably have some work to do in building psychological safety on your team. Um, when people know that they can be themselves and be authentically bring themselves to work, then it tends to open them up and the dialogue gets richer, sometimes deeper. Um, and also more celebratory as, as you celebrate the things that really make people um, in essence feel good or they're real proud of at, at their work. What about you, Amy? Um, I think it's when people are willing to tell me when they screwed up. Mm, very good. I, I, if there's a, something that gets screwed up and you're willing to come tell me and I don't have to just find it, do that. And, and I know you knew that's the part when I know, okay, yeah, you feel like I, yeah, I always assume, would prefer someone come tell me first so we can fix a lot of things. That's what I would say. How do you guys lead that? Like, what is it that you do to set that example for those uh, working alongside of you? Yeah, Chris, that that is a tough question, but I would just tell you from from my perspective, and and I'm totally interested in yours, um, it means you have to be vulnerable yourself. To build a a culture of trust-based vulnerability starts with the leader and their ability to be vulnerable in the fact that, hey, I'm not perfect, I have some shortcomings. Believe it or not, when I write an article, um, it needs proofed and corrected, and I need feedback to to make it better. And so when I can honestly come forward and ask for that kind of help and be vulnerable in those things, it doesn't lessen the fact that, you know, I'm a leader. It just enhances the fact that I'm a leader. You can be yourself around and it's safe. It's okay. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that vulnerability piece is, is the key to that because then you're being authentic, right? And you're saying, hey, I need help here, or I messed this up, you guys. Can you guys help me? Here's a solution potentially that we could work through. Let's do this together. You know, I think that that really builds deep inroads into that trust. I had a situation, Chris, when when I was a young leader and I was in the army and, um, you know, we went on weeks of maneuvers and these were, you know, the kind that break you down to your core. Right. And in those moments, um, leaders make a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. And the thing that I recognized is that. If I wasn't humble enough to to come forward and be vulnerable, I would amplify my mistake instead of correcting my mistake. So for an example, I took a right down what I thought was a road turned out to be a creek bed. I led an entire company down a creek bed that got to be a rocky river and blew the axles out on a couple Humvees, which you're not supposed to do, but congratulations. And so that was a really mistake. But I had to finally admit, I think I made a mistake so that we could get back on there. So, so that vulnerability enabled me to then backtrack, adjust from that mistake and get our people around that, that particular maneuver. Um, but, but I think for me, uh, it's hard, but it's absolutely necessary. The other thing I could have done is keep driving forward, not acknowledge that I wasn't on the right road and drive us off. I don't know where we'd ended up, probably some waterfall somewhere, um, but that could have happened very easily. At least it would have been pretty. Yes, it would have. <laughs> the scenery was gorgeous, let me tell you. <laughs> Amy? 
All right, the next one, the last one. I share information and knowledge freely with my colleagues. My word, river. I say this all the time, be a river of information and not a dam. When people broker information like they're at a poker table, it always causes distrust within the organization and puts people at a disadvantage. I would say wisdom because wisdom comes down to making good choices and good choices require good information and knowledge. And a lot of times bad decisions are made because someone didn't bring that right knowledge or information forward for a good decision to be made. And so which is more a downstream word, but you know. You got the water in there. Good job, Chris. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The first word that came to my head was community. Um, remembering that we're all a community together. And when you're in a community, you got to share information freely. But I don't know if that's as good as you guys is. So I don't no, know. It's I think community. It's I like it. Yeah, perfect. Well, I will make those around us better. Um, there is a lot to this one and a lot to the signature way. And as I reflect on how proud I am to serve this company and serve uh, healthcare, I'm often um, taken aback that we have tools like the Signature Way, the Uncommon Leadership Playbook, um, podcast designed to help us gain in our understanding of it, and then the freedom to truly show up and be authentic. That means the world to me. Each of you, by the way, represent that very well. And to our listeners, uh, we want to invite you to re-listen to some of the podcasts that you have, to think through these elements, because I guarantee you, no matter what organization you work for, the things that we've talked about our difference makers in people's careers. The perspectives that we offer, we hope, will add value so that you can continue to thrive at work and we can make a greater impact together. Chris, Amy, thank you so much for discovering the Signature Way with me. And um, what challenge would we like to leave our listeners with this week as we um, um, go out and try to make those around us better? Well, it's been a, a pleasure going through this with you, Mark. I think you know, there's a model that I've heard in, in past trainings called be, do, have. You know, you can you can do tons and tons and tons, but if you don't focus on the be part, you still won't end up with what you're striving for. You know, I can play basketball in the NBA and I'll get scored on every single time and probably never score a point because I am not an expert basketball player that's dedicated my life to the sport, right? You have to be first and then do and then have. And so the signature way really focuses on that. You know, who are we? The Uncommon Leadership Playbook, same thing. Who are we going to be? And then apply that to where we go. So focus on who you're going to be, you know, challenge to the listeners. Who are you going to be? You heard it first. Team, uh, great session. Great talk, Chris. Thanks for bringing Claire and shining a light on her amazing talents and, and all that she brings to this company. Appreciate you both very much. And to our listeners, for those of you who entered our recent Facebook contest, thank you for taking the time to listen to The Edge and investing time in making a bigger impact in yourself and for our mission. I'm excited to announce that the winner of our contest is, drum roll please, Shelly Lee, one of our awesome senior revenue cycle representatives. Shelly, our producer Addison will be in touch via the signature email to get you your awesome new JBL waterproof Bluetooth speaker. Perfect for listening to our podcast, and all your other podcasts, by the way, by the pool, at the lake, or even if you're running through the sprinkler in the yard. We will see you soon with more great episodes helping make you uncommon. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Signature Performance is the foremost leader in healthcare administration. Your work advancing our mission is transforming healthcare in the U.S., Signature is bringing together the best and brightest in healthcare. Discover opportunities at www.signatureperformance.com slash careers and be inspired to build an uncommon career that matters.